Okay, let me give a, a brief introduction because now I'm going to start recording us and then this is going to be uploaded to the YouTube channel. So um, you can see the members that are here and Kathy's asking some really good questions and I've made some comments. We, we are, I didn't turn it on. Oh, it's at, it's exactly 7.30 here at the moment. So we've been here um, for about half an hour, you know, throwing things around. And uh, Kathy asked me first about the seven thunders of Revelation 10 which I didn't want to go into too deeply and that would that would cause even more confusion so going back to the beginning is going to be where it's going to be a lot better for us and for those that are following along what we're doing so you can see what's written up there and Kathy made a made mention of what was written last week in last week's newsletter and the uh, the mystery of Adam that you saying that it was beyond me and then my comment was that that's, this is a perfect opportunity because whenever you, you're reading these featured articles, these, these reports up at the top, and something is beyond you, that's whenever you begin formulating the question. And formulating the question, all right, when you have a tutor, you're going to college, you're taking this advanced uh, calculus class, having that tutor is really a gift from God because you, whenever you're sitting in class with something you don't see, what are you going to do? You're going to run to your tutor. You're going to ask. Tutor's going to say, oh, because Tutor's already seen it all before. Tutored hundreds of people, right? That's to your advantage. So so then uh, what Kathy's asked is, could you go through and take Adam and walk through his incarnations? Okay, and this is difficult for people to to begin to, to wrap their heads around. Because Hebrews 9.27 says, for a man to die once and then the judgment well what's going on here well you also know that elijah never saw death you know that second kings chapter 2 started 10 there that he was taken straight to heaven in the chariot of fire he didn't see death why because that's another skin for adam and uh so in genesis 3 21 whenever it says that the lord god gave them skins well those were the human skins that was his recent in, most recent incarnation but Adam has been has incarnate here before if you read Howie's Bible handbook then it's around page 100 then you're going to see there's a king there that ruled for 48,000 years from the ancient times from the times before okay so the first incarnation of Adam takes place in Genesis 1 1 I know this sounds strange doesn't it in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth that is the key to breaking God's true Bible code three witnesses of spirit God blood and water God is the spirit witness heaven is the blood witness earth is the water witness Adam is the earth that's what his name means that's what he that's uh, his first incarnation but here's the deal. God had to break Adam. He had to because that's what happened in the infinite realm where you're gods. See, God represents an entire infinite realm. Heaven represents an entire realm, a created realm. And then the earth is a realm that was created inside of heaven. So if you're, if you're familiar with my diagrams, if you've read my book, then you know that the outside shell is the infinite realm. That's God. It's the shell of the egg that is infinite. And then the white of the egg, of the boiled egg, that's heaven. And then the yolk of the egg, that's the earth. That's the true nature of our universe. So you say, which, which way is heaven? People point up, but heaven is really in every direction. Okay, so then, after the perfect ages of Genesis 1-1, that's Adam's first incarnation. Then, the earth was made formless and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. The same darkness of Ephesians 6-12 evil powers of this darkness All right this is the age right we're with we're right now in the same evil age that began in Genesis 1 2 when the previously perfect um, um, earth was destroyed so the Big Bang isn't about the creation of anything the Big Bang happened whenever that perfect earth was destroyed the rest of the of Genesis 1 represents God reconstituting the entire broken remains of Adam so that's where the heavens come in 
So you, you see that the water's above the expanse and the water's below the expanse. The water's above the expanse are the heavens. The water's below the expanse are the earth, the visible universe that Eve represents. Adam represents everything in the heavens. Eve represents everything's in the earth. Their seed, see that's where the expanse is. That's the heaven that is begotten in Genesis 1.8. So if you want to talk about the second incarnation of Adam, it's in the heavens. Eve is the earth. And they are made. See, the first man, when it talks about God creating first man, male and female, he created them, Genesis 1, 26 through 28. Okay. Notice the man, male and female, he made them. And they are made in our image. The three witnesses that are speaking there are God. God who is is speaking. God who is from Revelation 1, 8. He is speaking to God who was and God who is to come. They are a trinity. Every singularity, God from Genesis 1-1 is broken into a trinity. God who is, God who was, God who is to come. Three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. Same exact pattern of God, heaven, and earth. Same exact pattern. Once you see the three witness pattern, all this, you begin seeing so many different things on so many different levels. Okay, so... Adam incarnating as the heavens and then as the earth is duplicated whenever Adam Adam is created in Genesis 2 7 okay so just as we're counting here and we we are missing omitting many incarnations of Adam he's been coming a long 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 time there are races that appeared before us consider the people that piloted the ships that picked up Elijah and took him to heaven just try to imagine a spaceship that can take Elijah to heaven. Imagine the technology they must have. This, some of the things I'm going to tell you are going to sound kind of strange, but you asked the question, right? Okay, so. The races that appeared before the mammalian races were the amphibious races and the reptilian races. You hear about the reptilians this, reptilians that. Well, guess what? That's real. And... They pilot the ships. The thing is, they're terrestrial. People think that they're extraterrestrial. They're from other places. They're from here. They've been custodians of this chunk of rock circling the sun for millions and millions and millions of years. They are cousins to, guess who, the Chinese, the Aborigines, the people on our planet that are RH positive exclusive that are beardless, whose ancestors evolved from the waters of Genesis 1.20. And they've been here a long, long, long time. Okay, so we kind of talked about that last week, I believe. That those six-day people, that they represent members of Adam's body when he was made, and the day God made him in the infinite realm through his word. Okay, so whenever God, whenever God made Adam, he had all these members of his body. Adam's infinite. Each member of his body is infinite. That's how God makes every God that he makes. Infinite. He makes them perfect. Mature, complete. Okay, so God had to make Adam, the earth, formless and void because he's reproducing what happened in the infinite realm during the satanic rebellion. The only reason we're here is for the purpose of judgment, because of what already happened. Satan murdered Adam, and in order for that to happen, nobody had ever died before in the infinite realm. The way that Satan did it is that he convinced the brethren of Adam to take the incarnation. See, the, uh, the part I left out is we incarnate all inside of one another. I talked about it last week. That. That's what gods do. There's a Kathy, there's Soak in the Sun, John, Dave, infinite, in the infinite realm. And what we do is, after God makes us, we have members in our body already, but our brethren incarnate inside of us too. So the earth had to be formless and void because Satan murdered Adam, and the way he did it was he talked all the brethren, he tricked them into taking the incarnation of Adam and pulling them out and chopping his head off 
all at the same time. So Adam was killed on the outside, and the ad, all the ad, the Adam incarnations in all the brethren were killed, effectively killing Adam. And so God, in order to restore Adam, he says to his word, God and his word are the same in the infinite realm. He's still there. Christ has no need of being restored of anything. Christ is God's word. He's with God right now. But God asked his word. He said, word, go over there and create Adam inside yourself again. He created Adam through his word the first time. He created him in his word the second time. That's the, the infinite eggshell, the yolk. I mean, the white of the egg and the yolk of the egg that I just explained to you. Okay, so he destroyed it. And the heavens and the earth became Adam's third incarnation. His incarnation, there were more. If you go back to Halley's Bible handbook, there were more of them as kings. But then this one here in Genesis 3.21, this is the one that happened only so many thousand years ago. Um, of all the gods, when do you think that the angel that covers went after Adam? You know, that's a really good question. And the answer is, well, where I'd want to send you is Isaiah 53. Because it's written about Adam. People believe, and it's written in the past tense. You go, why is it written in the past tense? If it's something happened in the future, because it happened in the past. It's written about Adam. Adam's life in this world, with the sweat on his brow and everything, mimicked what he, the way he was treated in the infinite realm. The reason that, the, that Satan went after Adam in the infinite realm is because that's what God created Adam for. He is the Lamb of God. The sacrificial lamb in the infinite realm. The, the sacrificial lamb in the infinite realm is not God's word. It's through God's word everything is created. You can't separate God from his word. God's word is mighty. It's impossible for a creation to do any harm to God's word. Because God, compared to everything he will ever create, is like a teeny speck of pepper on his little finger. Everything he will ever make. That's how great God is. And his word and God are the same thing. So when you read about that Christ was sent here to die for our sins, that he's the sacrificial lamb, even the stories of Abraham and Isaac, Isaac carrying his sticks, and he was carrying it to be sacrificed. God is Abraham, and Isaac, which people believe that's a type of Christ, right? But that's Adam in the infinite realm. God made Adam to be a sacrifice. That was his purpose for being created. So when you go back before Adam was made, there's a point where God had the need to keep a secret. And that's what all this is about, every bit of it. God had the need to, create, to keep secrets from his own children, which he hadn't done before. And once he made up his mind that that was a thing to do. That's when he created Satan as the anointed cherub that covers. See, and that's how you named him. He's, he's the, actually the cherub, the anointed cherub is the way that cherubs are guardians. They guard passageways and things like that. The cherub in this instance is Satan in the infinite realm. God created him for the purpose of keeping secrets. So there are passageways which we were, we were mentioning, I was mentioning earlier, passageways. That's what we're doing right now. We're walking up and down the passageways through heaven, even though we don't realize it. Because we're down here in this matrix, but we're also having an incarnation in heaven. And we also have an incarnation in the infinite realm that's frozen still from our perspective. Okay? So, the reason Adam was created in the first place was for sacrifice. Because Satan, the, the one that you read about that has all these precious stones, those precious stones are in his chest plate. Because of the stones that Satan has in his chest plate in the infinite realm, he can go anywhere. And there are, nobody else even knows where the doors are. So God, to turn things around, created Adam to be sacrificed, knowing that just like John the Baptist was sacrificed, chopped off, he had his head chopped off for Herod. Herod is Satan and John the Baptist is Adam. And the things that they were doing have already been done. The way that Adam was pulled out of the dungeon is the way Adam was pulled out of the dungeon of all the sons of God in the infinite realm. Satan is the one that told them to 
all the, he deceived everyone put them in the dungeon he, they kept them there and then when it came time they had the giant banquet and I all hauled Adam out at the same time and, and they murdered him that's the way that it works um, passageways actually are these passageways actually the intimate hidden aspects of Almighty God um, see that's um, we're gonna have problems with semantics because I can interpret some of your your words there in different ways um, looking at it from our perspective here when you're when you are looking at God's Word you're looking at a living document spirit blood and water as a spirit body and a soul and you are looking at a blueprint of heaven which is broken right now the Lamb of God's up there in kind of a dungeon a dungeon looking place compared to New Jerusalem but you're looking at a blueprint of New Jerusalem itself when you're looking at God's Word the reason it works that way is because New Jerusalem is modeled after the things of the infinite realm so yes the answer to your question is yes the passageway in heaven and in the text they are mirrors of things when it, whenever you see and that's what I was writing about today um, Christ speaking about on earth as, as it is in heaven things that are bound the things that you loosed whenever Christ is given the keys of the kingdom to Peter and he says he's given him the keys the things that you would lose have already been loosed in heaven Peter John and James they're, they're not uh, the sharpest knives in the drawer when you get to heaven you'll see what I mean they look like they're big chickens looking at it from this perspective Christ chose them to be the 12 right and their names are written on the columns right of New Jerusalem you know why because they're gonna be the last ones there Paul is on one end of the spectrum put at the top right up there by Christ for a reason because of what things done in the infinite realm the person on the bottom of the food chain all the way down on the bottom of everybody the last one to join us in Christ Jesus is Peter the last one the one that had no faith at all so when Christ said that if you had the, the if you had the faith of a mustard seed then you could cause, tell this tree to be uprooted and you could, it'd fly over here mountains he wasn't telling them that they're ever going to be flinging mountains around that wasn't the lesson he was telling them that they had no faith zero faith none they don't even have the faith of a mustard seed those that have not even the faith of a mustard seed are the ones that are born here as Jews God's using Israel for something he's their chosen race the question is chosen for what he's using them as an example he's already said he's gonna make them jealous they're at, God the Lord God is outraged and he's outraged with them in the infinite realm those are the ones who had no faith zero faith at all so things are backwards from the way that they seem in this real in this matrix that we're in okay um these passage ways actually lead us to more uh, intimate understanding of Almighty God absolutely but the thing is God has to choose you he chooses you by things you've already done in the infinite realm that coincide with the intentions of your heart they in, they coincide so those of us that have the the I mean the it's like a bull a, a hound dog desire to know God's Word we're going up and down the passageways and in, in his word because we got to know what the truth is we got to know what the truth is the insatiable appetite you see those the reason that we're that way is because of the way we are in the infinite realm that's why you can't change that and then from there there are many different directions to go but what I'm, I'm trying to uh, do is answer uh, Kathy's question if that we're going to walk through the different incarnations and now if you have questions that are along the way I mean those, those Dave those are very very good questions so I want to kind of digress a little bit and walk through those incarnations so far we're at Genesis 321 whenever Adam was placed in a human skin Eve too you notice there's no uh, procreating before that because they're in heaven Adam in Genesis 2 7 is in heaven Adam and Eve whenever Eve is taken out of his body out of his side they're both in heaven they only get down into the earthly garden just remember there's a earthly garden that is represented on this particular planet in the Euphrates Basin 
over there where you see Iraq and Iran, between the Nile River and the Euphrates River, the Euphrates Basin. These kings that I told you about that ruled for up to 48,000 years, guess where their kingdom was? Same exact place, the Euphrates Basin. So the restored kingdom, David's kingdom, that's coming. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David. Yeah. Our father David is our father Adam. So if you go back in time and you go from the skins of Genesis 3.21, the next incarnation, well, first of all, the truth that we're talking about here is the truth of Isaiah chapter uh, chapter 4. Um, start at verse, you know, I might have to look this up. Isaiah 4, start at verse 7, I believe. That's where it's going to be. Just give me a second here. My, my brain's getting a little tired. Isaiah. No, Zechariah. Zechariah 4. And, uh, yeah. I'll just put the link here for you. Big time truth right here. And start at verse 11. Then I said to him, what are these two olive trees on the right of the lampstand on its left? And I answered, and whenever you're, you're looking at the trees in the lampstands, then kind of think of, of the heavenly environment and inside the temple or the tabernacle of Moses. And I answered uh, the second time and I said to him, what are these two olive trees? What are these branches which are beside the two golden pipes which empty the golden oil from themselves? So he said to me, he said, do you know who these are? And he, he said, no, Lord. And he said, these are the two anointed ones who, who are standing by the Lord of the whole earth. Now those two those two anointed ones are standing beside the whole Lord of the earth. And whenever I posted a link, then, then I lost my, um, you guys weren't able to hear me. So anyway, I just read what was said in the, the, uh, let me pull that back up again. The end says, uh, do you know who these are? And I said, no, my Lord. Then he said, these are the two anointed ones who are standing by the, Lord of the whole earth and the Lord of the whole earth is Jesus Christ and you are looking at him on the Mount of Transfiguration with his two anointed ones Elijah and Moses okay now those are the same two olive trees the two same two golden lampstands which is their heavenly identity their heavenly counterparts on earth as it is in heaven on earth as it is in heaven so the golden candlesticks are up. They are the golden candlesticks that are by the throne of the Lord. They're standing there as witnesses right now. Adam and Eve. And they on the earth are these two olive trees. And they were with the Lord God in the garden. In heaven and then cast down on the earth. And the, the cherubs were put to block the way back to the heavenly. Okay, and it's suffering violence. And it's taken by force now. So whenever Jesus Christ is talking about John the Baptist, saying from the John the Baptist, then, then uh, that heaven's taken by force. That's what he's talking about. The cherubs are guarding the way. Can't get back. But the thing to realize is that the Lord God, Jesus Christ, is talking about his, two, his olive tree, Adam. Okay. So, talking about the incarnations. And... The two witnesses that come again and again and again. The thing that makes Adam and Eve different from everybody else, everybody else was born of women. Adam and Eve were not. They were created. They don't have belly buttons, in other words. And everybody else in the genealogy comes from them. So the next one that comes in line is going to be Noah. And Noah is another incarnation for Eve, just like Moses, just like Bathsheba. And sometimes 
God sends one of his two witnesses by themselves, and sometimes he sends them both together, and sometimes God sends his two witnesses as one person. I know there's a lot to wrap your head around. But there's plenty of evidence in the scriptures when you're ready to get into the deeper things. So an example of uh, God sending both Adam and Eve is with Moses. Moses is another incarnation for Mother Eve. Now I mentioned, I might have mentioned that last week. I know I mentioned it in a recent video. If you followed all my videos made for in this series, then you you already know what I'm about to say, and that is uh, that um, Moses is an incarnation of our mother Eve. Moses' name means drawn, and on the surface, what that means is drawn out of the Nile River, but that's not what it means. The reason that Moses' name is named Moses is because Moses is our mother Eve who was drawn from the side of Adam. So whenever, whenever Moses wanted to see the glory of the Lord, and the Lord said, no, you can't do that. No man can see the Lord and, die and live. He says, what I will do, I'll put you in the cleft of the rock, and I'll put my hand over it, and all the elements are there. That's what I was explaining. I believe it was to Brian last week. The cleft of the rock, that means that it's too small for a person to get inside, but God put Moses in there because that's Eve inside of Adam and then when he moved his removed his hand that's the same hand the Lord God used to remove Eve from his side and then Moses was all happy because Moses got to see the glory of God but then the thing to realize about Moses is that Moses had to see death before entering the promised land had must had to see death because Moses is being a type of Eve is the mother of all the living and men must see death to go to heaven that's why the Jordan River represents the veil between the earth and heaven so whenever the sons of God were delivered I mean whenever Israel was delivered from Egypt only it was 40 years from the Red Sea to the Jordan River 40 years you can walk there in three weeks the Lord God kept them there 40. The 40 is the number of judgment. Israel was being judged. And the, the sons of Israel that left Egypt and that were in the desert, they were uncircumcised. All right? The final of these, those that were circumcised included Joshua and Caleb. I remember I asked that question last week. And you guys, and uh, I think it was David, you knew that his name was Caleb and for a reason. Because Caleb, which means dog, is representative. That's what the Gentiles, the Jews call. That's what even Christ called Gentiles. Saying he's not to give bread to the dogs. Speaking to, uh, who was that, the Samaritan woman? Samaritan woman. So, Joshua is an incarnation of Adam, the deliverer. And he was only one of two that was able to cross the Jordan River. In other words, go to heaven. So, what Joshua did was typical of what Elijah did. He crossed the veil between earth and heaven, you see. So God is using that as a type because Christ, the last Adam, is going to take this body of Christ, which is us, the dog, the Gentile body of Christ, and we're going to be take, meet Christ in the air, and then he's going to take us to heaven the same exact way. thing is, the Old Testament prophets, that's where we get the information from, but the Old Testament prophets could never see what any of this meant they didn't know what they couldn't understand what it meant we had to have the Apostle Paul these things revealed to him and then he explains it to us in those 13 letters and now we can go back to the Old Testament and see the types of what's going on your oldest son's Caleb that's cool okay so um so you have uh, you're up to, J to Joshua in the incarnations of Adam and the next one because there there's more that I'm that I'm sharing he the reason Adam and Eve come is they come to testify to their children that's the purpose of them coming okay so the next major character is going to be David and uh, fighting Goliath fighting the devil and the, the Satan and he's going to overcome in the end Michael the Archangel that's the type of Adam too, overcoming the dragon that's what happens in the end so Adam was made to be murdered to be a sacrificial lamb yeah but he's not just a lamb is he no he's going to turn around and be a conqueror 
the purpose that God made Adam was to be a sacrificial lamb, like I said, but the stones. Remember the stones that Satan has. So the object is to restore Adam to his fullness, full stature, all the members of his body intact. He walks back into the infinite realm, and guess what you find on his chest plate? Satan's stones. So Adam is the answer for Satan. He's the answer for God having to keep a secret from his sons. The mistake that God made. I know, I know, I know how it sounds. God making a mistake. But think about it. Who made Satan? God did. In his foreknowledge, he sees what's going to happen. Then he changes it and it never happens. But it did happen. The re the, there, it's, I mean, it's kind of complicated to explain. But in, in the end, Adam is going to be restored. He's going to stand up. He's going to have all the good stones that give all the access to all the hidden places in the infinite realm. He's going to stand up and be mighty. And guess what's going to happen? All the brethren that deceived him, they are the ones that are going to look upon their brother and weep for what they were tricked, deceived. So whenever you're reading in Isaiah 50, Isaiah 53 is written about Adam. And many of the things that you see written about Christ are written about Adam. The first Adam and the last Adam, it's all Adam. And then, so when he gets back to the infinite realm, then he is going to incarnate in all of his brethren again as a, re, as a newborn, newly created, something that they have never seen before. Something like Satan, with all those precious stones, but not with the iniquity that's in him. Made to be a sacrificial lamb, and then killed, and then brought back to life. Nobody's Remember, nobody's ever died in the infinite realm. This is something that is very, very special. So what do you think all the brethren in the infinite realm are going to do? When Adam is going to incarnate inside of them again, what do you think they're going to do? They're going to put Adam at their right hand, right beside them at his right hand. And then they're going to have access to all those places too. So this is a happy story in the infinite realm. By the, thing, by the time that things are done, the mountain of God, the sons of God are going to be reshaped. They're going to be put in different positions. Things are going to be shaken up. But those that are at the top, that are worthy, are going to be at the top. And the ones that were deceived, those that, that uh, didn't you know, have the good works, didn't have the burning desire in their hearts to know God and his word, they're going to be near the bottom. And then the assortment of things that are in between. And um, another incarnation of Adam, obviously, is uh, John the Baptist. And that's where Christ, the Lord God who made him, gives us a lot of the clues that people don't understand today. The, um, the place that I'm wanting, I mean, if you... If you, if you want more evidence of that, then the place where we're going to go is Matthew chapter, chapter 7. No, Matthew chapter 11, starting at verse 7. So let me pull that up, and then um, I'll go line by line and give you a little bit of commentary. Okay, and I had stopped the recording, so now that's back on. So I have Matthew 11 pulled up, and Isaiah 53 pulled up. Okay, so in Matthew 11, starting at 7, so these men were going away. Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. See, the thing to realize from the aspect of the mystery is that Jesus is the Lord God of Genesis 2 of the Old Testament, who created Adam, the Son of God. This is the Son of God, big S, right, that John the Baptist testifies about, creating the Son of God, little less, from the genealogy, the first man. That you end in Luke, whenever you end the last one, Adam, the Son of God. All right? There's only two sons of God. One of them is the heaven, and one of them is the earth. And they're incarnate here as the Lord God, Jesus Christ, and of Adam, the man that he made. So this is, whenever you look at it, from it, it causes the scriptures to literally come alive in you. When you realize these things, that this is the Lord God speaking about the man that he made. And these men were going away. And Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. He says, what did you go out 
into the wilderness to see a reed shaken by the wind? But what did you go out to see, a man dressed in soft clothing? Those who wear soft clothing are in king's palaces. But what did you go out to see, a prophet? Yes, I tell you, and one who is more than a prophet. This is about whom it is written, Behold, I send a messenger. So he's going back to Malachi chapter 3. But now, let me read a little bit to you from, let's see if I can get this to, I can't get it to go perfectly up in here the way I want to. Isaiah 53, Who has believed our message? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a tender shoot, like a root out of a parched ground. He has no stately form or majesty that we should look upon him, no appearance that we should be attracted to him. He was despised and forsaken of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief, and like one from whom men hide their face. You know, it's, it's difficult for me to read this without, you know, tearing up, because I, I'm, I, I see it, and my heart, my heart just breaks for uh, what happened in the infinite realm. You know, we're asking, why was he made? And that's the truth of why he was made. Most people never even know that. So going back to, uh, see, whenever the first thing that Christ, when he began testifying about his son, then he said, what did you go out in the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind. He was sending you right back to the shoot back in, in Isaiah 53. That's what he was doing. And whenever he said, he, Christ is giving clues. He's not speaking directly. He's saying that, Men who wear soft clothing belong in king's palaces. He's telling you that this is David. And over in Mark, blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Whenever they're saying that, even though they don't know, they're saying, blessed is the kingdom of our father Adam. That's what all this is about. And that's what the mystery of Adam, when I was trying to convey there, that that's, that's what it's about. The only person in the kingdom greater than the prophet. That's what he says. But what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I say to you, and one who is more than a prophet. The only person in the kingdom that is greater than the prophet is who? It's the king. And that's what Christ is saying about John the Baptist, who's the son of a priest. He's the son of the priest that the just before he was born, whenever John the Baptist was in his mother's womb, his father, the priest, was sent. He was chosen by lot out of all the priests. Because one of those priests, one time a year, goes behind the second veil in the Holy of Holies, and it was his father that was chosen to go there. He's the son of a priest, but he's also a prophet, and he's also a king. That's the thing to realize about him, that he's the same thing in the earth that Christ is in heaven. He's Christ is the prophet, the priest, the king, big T, big prophet, big K. And John the Baptist was the prophet, priest, and king, little P, little prophet, and king of the earth. Everything that Christ does in the heaven, John the Baptist does in the earth. So then um, he says, this is the one about whom it's written, Behold, I send you a messenger ahead of you will repair the way before you. That's Malachi 3.1. Then uh, truly I say to you, among those born of women, there is not risen one greater than John the Baptist, because there's none greater than Adam. That's why. But then he says, but the one that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he, because he's talking about Petros. He's talking about Peter, Peter the Rock. Even though nobody realizes that today, almost nobody, the, the mystery types teach. That's why in uh, Matthew 10, the, the chapter just before this one, verse 1 and 2, the first is Peter, when he's really the last. And this comes about when the saying that the first will be last, the last first, that has so many meanings. And one of them is what we're speaking about right here, that the greatest is going to be Adam because everybody else, imagine, he was made in Genesis 2 7. All of us were inside of him. We've all been born all this time, all these generations. 
nobody that came after can say they're greater than the first man, right? But he that's in the kingdom of heaven, and that's what I was saying earlier, that heaven between between earth, between God and the earth in Genesis 1-1 is heaven. That's an almost infinite realm. Every member, every member of that realm is an almost infinite being. Peter is there, he's the least, and he's still greater than this entire universe. That's the truth. From the days of John the Baptist, just replace that with Adam. From the days of Adam until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and violent men take it by force. For all the prophets in the law prophesied until John. Just replace Adam. The prophets in the law, that's the Old Testament. Mark 1. Just look, just jump from the Old Testament, the last two verses of the Old Testament. Behold, the great and terrible day of the Lord, before that he's sending the Eli Elijah, he's going to restore the hearts and the father, hearts of the fathers to children, and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the land with a curse. And the last word of the Old Testament is, is the word curse. And it talks about who's coming, and this is him. This is him right here. So all the law and the prophets prophesied until it began to be fulfilled. And this is the guy that's fulfilling it. And he's Adam. He's walking around. And then he, he even says, for all the prophets and law prophecy, and he says, if you are willing to accept it, and this is what Christ is always saying about those that are to recognize this prophet, if you're willing to accept it, if you're willing to accept it, because if you're not willing to accept it, he's not him. If you're willing to accept it, John himself is Elijah who is to come, even though most of the translations say who was to come, it is to come. Then uh, the next thing, the next place where I'd like to go to is chapter 17 and verses 10 through 13. And I mean, you've got the links there you, you, um, in the chat room. I'm just going to look to see to make sure that my, yeah, it's still green. Okay. Because this is what I want to read to you. It's just a few verses, very short. Because this is where it comes up again, and this is a key to, to, for understanding. And his disciples asked him, Why then do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? And he said, Elijah is coming and will restore all things. Now, Elijah is the prophet of Acts 3, start at verse 19. By the time you get to 26, you'll see him there. And he's the most powerful figure in the Bible. Whoever does not obey his word is utterly destroyed from among the people. Because he has the powers of Elijah, which are the powers of Adam, the original cultivator of the land. But I say to you, Elijah already, come, uh, already came, and they did not recognize him, but they did to him whatever they wished. So also the Son of Man is going to suffer at their hands. First Adam, last Adam. Both have to be killed. They have, both have to be killed, because that's what happened in the infinite realm. The thing is, Adam is not able to carry the cross to Calvary. Only the Lord God who made him could do that. The last Adam had to do that. John the Baptist carried it so far to the Jordan River, baptized the Lord God, and he carried the Holy Spirit with him until he gave up the Spirit on the cross of Calvary. Adam, John the Baptist couldn't do that. The Lord God had to do that. He had to go across the finish line with that. God's word had to be broken by the men the same way that it happened in the infinite realm. Okay. But then, th this is the part. Then the disciples understood that he had spoken to them about John the Baptist. This is one of the, if not the most misleading verse in the whole Bible. Because you come away with what the disciples understood, but you did not come away with what they did not understand. Christ said that they did not recognize him. They did not recognize him as their father, Adam. They saw the skin of Elijah. They recognized that part, but they didn't see the other part that people do not see even to this day. That, that's, this is another skin for the father, Adam. John the Baptist's skin for Adam. David is going to come. So you want to know the next incarnation for Adam? It's going to be Ezekiel chapter 34, start at verse 23. David is going to feed them himself. He's in the kingdom that's coming up. 
the day of the Lord. During the day of the Lord, he's going to sit on the throne. And he's still going to be recognized as David the king, who is just another skin for their father Adam. So then the thing is, who's going to recognize him as for who he really is? Although going all the way back to the beginning and all the types and everything. And who's going to see him as just Elijah the prophet? As just David. As just John the Baptist, you see? So there's a mystery of Christ. If you read um, what I wrote last week. There's God's mystery. And then there's the mystery of Adam that's never mentioned in the whole Bible. And the way I present it is the mystery, the uh, body of Christ. Everybody knows here there's a body of Christ. Everybody knows here there's a body of Moses. Because you read 1 Corinthians chapter 10. That all were baptized in the body of Moses. So you know there's a body of Moses. You know there's a body of Christ. Now what's missing? Come on, what's missing? Can anybody type it before I say it? A body of, there's a missing body. Just like there's God's mystery. Colossians 2.2. 2. There's a mystery of Christ. Ephesians 3.4. Colossians 4.3. The missing mystery is the mystery of Adam. God gives you the two pieces. He wants you to find the third one. Whenever you find the third one, it's like finding a secret passageway in God's word. It's really great stuff when you can see it. And it's really great when you can see it well enough to draw diagrams and help others to see it. In this evil age, in this dark, when darkness is covering us. It's okay. These seeds are what's important. The seeds go into the fertile heart. And watering causes the growth. God is the one that causes the growth. And he does it according to his own time. He chooses who sees his hidden wisdom. What God is doing is he is looking around and identifying good ground. Those that are going to pray, because I'm praying for you. And then he opens the doors. Then he causes the growth. The seed is the faith. And then knowledge is the shoot. And only once you have the suit, when you have a seed, you're a long way from having the fruit. You got to have the tree, right? You got to have the branches. That's the knowledge. It begins with the with the seed of faith. And see the the question that's uh, like whenever Kathy asked, whenever you ask the question uh, in Revelation that it includes types, and then it's going to be very very difficult to see. And that's another reason to be asking questions about the truth of the Gospels, the Gospel of the Kingdom, the Gospel of the Grace of God, the two churches. No Bible verses to support that. Well, of course not. God is not a simpleton. The truth of God's living word is the only living document. It's a, it's a road map. It's a map of heaven itself. And um, there is, could you say that Adam is Jesus in man form throughout the Bible? That's not what I'm saying. No. Jesus, and whenever you say Jesus, then we're going to have a problem because there's Jesus Christ and there's Christ Jesus. And Christ Jesus is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, spirit, soul, and body. That's an almost infinite universe. Jesus Christ is the incarnation of the Lamb of God. See, Christ Jesus incarnate is the Lamb of God in heaven. Revelation 7, 17 in the center of the throne. That's the incarnation of Christ Jesus in this universe. It takes away the sin of the world. Now the Lamb of God, he's there right now. He incarnated on this earth 2,000 years ago as Jesus Christ. And he did what he had to do. The Lamb of God that's in heaven there is the Lord God of the Old Testament. Same guy. Same guy that made Adam. But he's the last Adam. That's what heaven is. Heaven is a soul realm. The whole realm is a soul realm. This realm is a body realm. The infinite realm is a spirit realm by comparison. 
spirit, soul, and body. A man. Scripture's a man. Okay. The um, if you haven't seen, if you've never seen any diagrams from my book, not even one of the eighty diagrams, then this is probably not going to make any sense at all. If you start at the beginning, in page one of a book that's more than 500 pages, has 80 diagrams, then by the time you get to the end, then, and you do all the exercises, then you're going to be able to see it well. But remember that I'm, I've been seeing these things since uh, the 70s of the last century. You know, I'm kind of old. And thirsting for the truth of the Lord and, 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 and of God's word. And he's, this is, these are things he's shown me over a long, long time. So the book was written in 2005, published in 2017. And now it's uh, because the black star is almost here and we're about to be taken. This has become very important to be able to do. Um, and yes, Bible verses support each and every syllable of every single thing that I'm telling you. It does, but it just, you don't see it yet. But that's the way it works. God's wisdom is taught through his three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water in faith, knowledge, and wisdom fashion. And that's the way it is. Just because you haven't seen it yet doesn't mean it's not true. You have things to share that I can't see either. If things that you've seen for a long time, God showed them to you, those are pearls and jewels and things like that. You share them with me, and I go, man, I can't see it. Well, God hasn't chosen me to see that yet. But you put the seed of faith, in, in, you put the seed inside of me, God's, and you water it, God's going to cause the growth. That's the way it works. You have to have faith in that process. Because if you're going to base your conclusions about God's word on what you know right now, you're stunted growth. You're never going to be able to grow. What you can do See, I'm, I'm pulling up verses. I'm giving you verses. You check out the verses and see what I'm saying is true. And then you pray about it. If, if, you, if you don't see it today, then you pray that you see it tomorrow. That's the way that, the, that's the way that it works. I can remember back in the 80s, sitting in Bible study every Monday night for five years. And the, the leader of the group was a lady. Her name was Judy Bailey. She's a dispensationalist. Unregistered user. I remember you. I sure do. Yeah. Yes, you will. That guy's got some serious issues. He was in here last week. He got some serious problems. Anyway, um, are you predicting a timeline when we will be taken? He showed me the future. Okay, um, lady, are you a member of my group? Or are you a Pal Talk visitor? Okay, so um, yeah, that's really nice and everything. Yeah, you might want to be a lurker in here because these um, you see that website that's at the top? That's my website. And there is a newsletter program and a tutor program, which we're not locking the room because, you know, you're welcome. You're welcome to come here and listen. But these are members that are members of the group who subscribe and my YouTube channel and, you know, newsletter program. And now we're, this is kind of brand new. And they're interested in what I'm sharing in my weekly newsletters that come out every Tuesday. So if you go to that website and you go, it, it'll show the YouTube channel. I have a Black Star YouTube channel and a, a Scripture YouTube channel. Just click on that YouTube channel, be a subscriber. Oh yeah, I understand. And then go to the website and then you start in the Bible section and then the two Gospels of the New Testament, the two churches of the New Testament, there's 15 minute videos there. You know, just a little short. Differences between God, my Father, right in heaven. Once you get through those basic things, then you'll have a kind of a foundation of where I'm at. But those videos, some of those videos are made 2013 or something. So I've been, do so I've been doing this a long time. And um, so these are 
my supporters, and they come here every Tuesday night, 7 to 9, and they ask questions. And you're, you're welcome to come here every week if you want to, you know, without being a supporter until we start locking the room. And, but that, then all that I would ask is, is that you kind of lurk, you know, and then you decide if you want to join. If you want to join, pff, happy to have you. And now that's kind of, that's kind of how the situation works. On um, this other guy, I bounced him because he came in last week. He was rude. A really mean, you know, bad guy. Might need to put him on the ban list. Um, and as far as showing you the future, you know, I don't want to be, you know, like mean or anything, but God gives us prophecy now through his word. Yes, back 2,000 years ago, there were prophets. There were people of knowledge. They spoke tongues. They did all kinds of things because God's finished word wasn't done yet. The perfect hadn't come yet. Now the perfect has come. And God gives us this information through his word. These things that you're not seeing, you can kind of say that they're prophecies, but they're not. It's just, it's more like re revelations. Like learn through, you know, the, what Paul writes about, the mystery. And the understanding of his three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. So if you go to uh, that website, and then there'll be a link. Go to my YouTube channel. There are eight lessons. I mean, some of them are hour and a half long. And that will get you up to where we are right now. And then you'll say, oh, this is what they're talking about. Because the mystery of Adam is one of those weekly lessons that, uh, that they were asking about. Okay, so looking at the clock, then we're, we have just about 30 more minutes. If, um, because, with, oh, well, before that guy came in, that got kind of sidetracked. We were talking about the incarnations of Adam. The next one, he's going to come as David. Well, he's going to, whenever we're raptured, the moment that we're raptured and taken, the Holy Spirit's going to drop us off. The Holy Spirit's going to come back, go to the Jordan River, and, and he's going to, John the Baptist is going to be standing there again. Of course, his name's not going to be John this time. But whoever it is, he's going to be another skin for our father Adam, and he's going to get the Holy Spirit, and he's going to start preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Go to Matthew 24, 14. The gospel of the kingdom that Christ said would go to the whole world. Well, it's going to go to the whole world. This mystery time that we're living in right now, it's a mystery time. The Old Testament prophets don't see it. The day of the Lord started with John the Baptist. We're living inside the day of the Lord, but it's a parenthetical time. It's a mystery time. So here comes the day of the Lord. It's starting, but Israel re commits the transgression of Romans 11, 11. The transgression. Those in, back in verse 7... Those who were chosen, those who were called, they, they received eternal life, obeying the gospel of the kingdom, Peter, John, and James. They're going to be resurrected with us. We're members of the Lamb's body in Revelation. They are standing on the sea of glass out in front of us. Behind us, which they never see, it's never spoken about, is the invisible sea. It has their angel super halves. I know, as amazing as that, as that sounds, um, did you say that Matthew 11, verse 14, was to come, should be translated, is to come? Yes, it is. Definitely. Is to come. And if you want to read about him coming, that's part of prophecy in Acts chapter 3. Start at verse 19. And you're going to see that the restoration of all things, Christ says that, yes, he is coming and he will restore all things. So back in, in 11, that's in 17. Matthew 17, verses 10, 11, 12, 13. He is coming and he will restore all things. People like to take those words right out of Christ's mouth and act like that, he, that he's not coming. But he is. He's the prophet of Acts 3. Started 19. And it says, Heaven must hold Christ by the hand until the restoration of all things. So Elijah's coming to restore all things. That restoration of all things is only going to begin. It's going to take ages and ages and ages. That's why you see David on the throne. Ezekiel 34, start at 23. And then, there's a dozen uses of the term desolation. Going through Ezekiel 34, 35, 36, until you get to 37. Then you see the bones. Right? The, all those bones that are raised up. And then when you get to verse 24 in Ezekiel 37, you'll see that David is installed as king and he's installed forever. That's 
happens in Revelation 21, verse 1. So he's installed during the day of the Lord coming up, and he's installed again because he's cut off. If you go to Daniel 9, start at 24, you'll see that the Messiah, Messiah the Prince is cut off. That Messiah the Prince, people want to, they want to make that into Christ being cut off 2,000 years ago. That's not the truth. David is cut off from Ezekiel 34. He's cut off, he's killed, he's beheaded in his own guillotine. Satan, the beast and the false prophet, all incarnate unto the earth as men in the last time, their short time at the end of the age that's coming. They're going to cut him off. The last incarnation of Adam in this age comes in Revelation 11. The two witnesses, Adam and Eve, come again. And they testify to their disobedient children only because the, 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 uh, the great tribulation has already happened. And which means all the righteous, all those that obeyed the gospel of the kingdom, they're dead. They're standing on the sea of glass with Peter, John, and James. They don't die and go to heaven. They don't die and go into the into Sheol in the ground. They die and they go directly to that sea of glass. They stand with Peter, John, and James serving the Lamb. And when their number is complete and it gets to be the end, then the end can come. That's why Christ says the gospel of the kingdom go to the whole world and then the end will come. Because the last one that obeys the gospel of the kingdom has to be martyred. There's no rapture for them like there is for us. There's no rapture at the end. So Satan and the devil, uh, which is the devil, Satan is the devil, the beast, and the false prophet. Three witnesses, spirit, blood, and water. They're all incarnate as men at the end of the age, and they, the beast is the one that comes along and kills the two witnesses. They lie in the street three and a half days, and everybody in the world has been tormented by them. These are the sons of Cain. The, all the bad guys. These are all the, uh, well, I mean, forgive me if you're a Democrat, but, you know, the Pelosi's and the Schiff's and the Nadler's, the Schumer's, all these bad guys that are trying to impeach Trump for nothing, for doing absolutely his his job. They're the one, the whole world's going to be full of people just like that. And so whenever the three witnesses are going to torment them, they're going to they're going to be waving their finger and they're going to be causing they're going to have the same powers as Elijah and Moses, and they're going to be using their power and testifying to their children. And uh, here comes the beast. The beast is the one that overcomes them. Why? Because that's what happened in the infinite realm. Remember, we're replaying, we're redoing things over and over again because we're re we, we are replicating events that happen in the infinite realm. To replicate an infinite event, you have to do it many, 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 many times. John the Baptist had to have his head cut off. Adam had to suffer in his 930 years that he lived on this earth. He suffered and suffered and suffered. So there's a lot of suffering and there's victory too. You look at Elijah, you see a story of victory. Look at David over Goliath, you see a story of victory. Well, you see turmoil, of course, but then you see victory. That's there. And the, the way to visualize David and Bathsheba is David is the heavens. He's looking over into the pool of water where Bathsheba is bathing. So Bathsheba is the earth that's of water, made out of water. And, and David is the heavens, which is, this is the story of Adam and Eve being told from a different perspective. Abraham, Sarah, Adam and Eve, the father who became the father of fathers, Abram to Abraham. He is the father. He's another skin for, for Eve. I mean, for Adam. And uh, Sarah is another skin. So whenever you realize that, and that's a question that Dr. Laura was asking me. She, she was, uh, one, so the three witnesses are testifying. What are they testifying about? Whenever you realize that Elijah, Christ, and Moses are three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water, you realize that God, heaven, and earth are three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. You see? You see these two witnesses and these three witnesses throughout the whole Bible. You know their testimony because you've read the Bible. They are testifying all the time. They're not only testifying about themselves, like Moses is a water witness. The Holy Spirit's a water witness. The Holy Spirit's called the helper. 
just like Eve's called the helper. The Holy Spirit is a water witness priest for the Father and the Son, just like Eve is the helper of Adam and the seed. So we learn about the relationships of Adam and Eve to their seed by looking at the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We learn about our own souls by listening to how the Father speaks of his Son. You know that the Spirit, you know that the Spirit gives authority to the soul to judge because of what it says in John about the Father giving authority of the Son to judge. So the three witnesses are testifying all the time. They're, they're, they're testifying simultaneously. The Son is testifying about the Holy Spirit and the Father and himself. And then when you realize he's a blood witness, the Son is testifying about your soul. He's testifying about heaven. He's talking about all of the blood witnesses of the whole Bible. They're all testifying simultaneously until the sound that they make is angel song that's coming out from your heart, from the new man that's inside of you. That's the way that it works. Seeing the three witnesses, understanding God's true Bible code, it's the most important thing about interacting with God's living word and realizing what it really is. So living, this is heaven incarnate in a document. It is Christ in you is heaven incarnate inside of you. And then inside of heaven, incarnate inside of you, heaven inside of you is a tabernacle. The true tabernacle above is heaven, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And it's exactly laid out like the tabernacle of Moses in the temple. The twelve golden pans equate to something in heaven. The veils equate to veils. The, the veil between the heaven and the earth is symbolized by the first veil as you go into the temple. All of these things are, are teaching us about heaven. The things we read in the scriptures, the things we see in the temple, everything. Once you see it. So what are the three witnesses testifying about? They're testifying about, well, their own family, which are mystery sets. The son testifies about the father's son and, and the Holy Spirit. But then the son testifies about each blood witness in the same column. See, in my book, there are two charts that lay out all kinds of three witness mystery sets even down to the the um the birds of the air the beasts of the field and the fish of the sea three witnesses of spirit blood and water and through the types then we know that when the earth is remade you notice the even when the earth is remade in revelation 21 1 there's no longer any sea imagine when the earth is remade a hundred times a thousand times in new ages eventually there's going to be no more birds and eventually there's going to be no more fish that sounds crazy doesn't it it sounds crazy but that's what the types teach there's going to be no more father and there's going to be no no more holy spirit in the end you notice when you get to first corinthians 15 you get down to verse 27 everything is subjected to the son everything subjected to the son the Father, that includes the Father and the Holy Spirit. You know why? Because the Son becomes the Word again. It was from the Word that the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit came forth. And the Son is going to continue to grow two overlapping circles, Venn diagram. The blood witness in the middle is going to keep getting bigger every age, every age, every age, until eventually there's no more Father and there's no more Holy Spirit. There are going to be no more fish. There's going to be no more birds. The only animals that are created in the new earth eventually are going to be beasts of the field. That's all there's going to be. Eventually, the earth is going to be remade and there's going to be, you're not going to see the spirit, which you don't see now, right? But you can't see the soul either. But the day is going to come when we, when men walking around on the earth see the soul and we don't see the body and we don't see the spirit. Eventually. Because eventually, when the creation is remade so many times, Everybody's going to be a living soul. So we're going to go through so many ages. And then we're going to pass through a veil, which is going to be a blood witness veil. The same type of veil that separates your body from your soul. The same type of veil that separates the earth from heaven. The creation itself is going to go through a veil into a blood witness, well, series of incarnations. And the men that live on the earth 
are going to be living souls like Adam in Genesis 2-7. That's going to happen. And there's going to be no more fish in the sea. There's going to be no more birds. Sounds, you know, sounds kind of crazy. But whenever you realize, you look at the charts, and you grow in these things over decades and decades, then you begin to see where how everything plays out. So in my book, The Mystery Explained, then it shows you how God who is is going to grow and God who is to come, God who was, they're going to disappear. There's going to be no more need for them. No more need for a Father, Son, and Holy Spirit like there was in the beginning. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Well, the Word, that's the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. When the Word goes back, when the Son goes back to being the Word, the Word goes back into the sight of God, everything goes back where it came from. Eve goes back into Adam. Adam goes back inside the angel. The angel, the man, and the woman together, three witnesses, living soul. So you are down here on the earth. You, you do have a soul mate. But your soul mate is not walking around on the earth. Your soul mate is in the heavens with nose pressed against the veil, wondering about you like a husband looking for his bride. Exactly. The same way the heavens is filled with angels looking out to the earth at their lesser halves. These are the things taught once you see God's wisdom hidden in plain sight using his three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. Once you, um, you, know, once you grow, it begins with the seed of faith, and that's taught right in the book. You can see the three stair steps there. The bottom step, faith. Next step, knowledge. The next step, wisdom. I was on the faith part for a long, long, long time. So now I'm in my 60s. I began this in my teens. Then in the knowledge part. Then in the wisdom part. Once you start getting that fruit, you start eating on that fruit, breaking it open, guess what you find? You find more seeds. More seeds into the fertile ground, more watering, more shoots, more fruit. And this takes us back to the garden and the types that we see there the trees of the garden. The trees within us being the knowledge and, and God's hidden wisdom. Um, so Dave, um, let's see. So when we stand in full consciousness in the blood realm and look upon the earth, we will know only what we have learned here. Or will we get um, a download, so to say, of all of God's plane of restoration entails in detail? Or is what we learn here and now aid us in our continual uh, participation in God's restoration of all things? Whenever you get, whenever you get to heaven, you're going to realize that all of this life was like a dream. We're already there. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, that's what I was writing about to uh, Trevor this, in this week's newsletter. I don't know if you downloaded it yet. But the, the, the rewards that, that uh, Paul talks about, 1 Corinthians 3, uh, start at verse 10 there. Then uh, the, the gold, silver, and precious stones. God is giving us things that are already ours. He's given us things that we've already earned in the infinite realm. Remember, you're doing things you've already done. Ecclesiastes 1 started 9. There's nothing new here. We've already done all this before. We're going to do it again. You're lucky that God is giving the opportunity to see it. That means that he allowed you to see it in the infinite realm. It makes you very special. People, there's not many. Like I said, I've been doing this for decades, and there's not... Imagine seeing these things back in the 80s and in the 90s, and there's nobody in the world to even talk with, to about it. They all think you're out of your darn mind. They think you're like, you know, like John the Baptist in the wilderness. Why do you think he lived in the wilderness? Imagine the things that John the Baptist had to say. Because people thought he, he had animal, he lived in animal skins. He was, uh, the reason that God put him in animal skins like that, and, and you read about him being in the wilderness, is not necessarily because he was in the wilderness, because you can be in the middle of a crowded city like New York and be in a wilderness if nobody has an ear to hear what you have to say. And that's what he was saying. Nobody could hear what he had to say until the proper time. He began to preach the gospel of the kingdom, and then people began to respond 
because God opened their ears to hear it. Same thing here with the mystery. God has to open ears to hear it. And that's how it's going to work. So as you see it, the way that you're going to see it more, you're only going to get so much by listening to me, running my yapper, and looking at my diagrams and reading my book. The way that you're going to get ready, and that's going to take you up to a, a rung where you're going to plateau. And you're going to be, well, the black star is almost here, so I don't know how, long, how much longer. But you're only going to be able to go so far, then you're going to have to help others. It has to be in your heart, like I'm here right now helping you. You have to be willing to help others. Even whenever you're being persecuted and you're being put down, spitefully used, you still stand up like Paul. You know, because he was teaching people the mystery and things, and they would, the people of the city would grab him and take him out of the city, and they would stone him. And the only reason they stopped stoning him is because they thought he was dead. So Paul, when he finally wakes up, what does he do? He gets back up and he walks back into the city. That's the attitude that we have. When you have that attitude, that's the kind of spirit that God is looking for. And if you have that kind of spirit, you already had it in the infinite realm, and you have it now. And you're only trying to access it. And you're still going to access it by... Those three, the, the principle of faith, knowledge, and wisdom. Reading God's word. The seeds. They go in. And then prayer and water. And the watering part, that's why you come here on Tuesday nights. You, that you read my, my um, newsletters and things. You're going to get more water like that. You're going to get doctrine from somebody that knows church doctrine, the body of Christ. Blood witnesses according to the three witnesses rather than somebody that's mixing kingdom doctrine and grace doctrine together and they don't know the difference. Right? And then you, the, the new man that's inside of you. And if you didn't watch my video from today, you're going to want to watch it. Because I use the diagram from my book and show how the faith of Jesus is the central core of, your new, of your, the new man, the new nature that's in you. The Spirit of the Word and the Holy Spirit of Promise. Three witnesses how they come and tabernacle inside of you at the moment you obey the gospel. And that new man is the one that teaches you all these things that I'm showing you. You're not going to learn a thing from me. It's kind of like Morpheus. That's what I was saying to, uh, I was trying to use that analogy. You're going to see it in next week's newsletter. As my, I'm going to work on it a little more and spruce it up some. It's kind of like the Matrix, what Morpheus was telling Neo. Nobody can show you the Matrix. I can't show you the mystery either. You have to see it for yourself. And it's going to be the new inner man in you that is going to show it to you. So you're, that's why when you read my book, you're encouraged to actually draw out the diagrams and create your own red mystery folder. Because doing the diagrams, the new inner man is going to take charge. And as you're drawing, you know, and you're with your own pen, your own pencil, your own color, drawing the, the gold and the red and the blue, then, then that's, that's what's going to get you over the finish line on that. Um, yeah, and then, um, whenever we come together, then I'm going to do my best to try to lean everybody towards the milky side, you know, gospel, churches, baptisms, basic stuff. But at the end of the day, then you guys are going to drive the narrative. And if you ask me about Adam's incarnations or you ask me about, you know, then that's where I'm going to go, especially whenever the. The three witnesses can be used to help you to see the, all the periphery information and tie things together. That's really, really good. If we're going to go into Revelation to understand, that that's a little bit off. I mean, it's interesting, and it's a novelty, kind of, but those things happen 3,600 years from now. And it's not going to help us to see God's three witnesses. So I'm going to try to shy away from that, especially when we, we're going to be diving into types and any types and things that require a foundation different than what you are, what I'm trying to help you with right now. So right now it's more about um, doctrine and foundation and getting that exactly right so that when we build on top, everything is square, straight, and just right. It's, you're not going to build something that you're going to have to come back and tear down 
to build again on top of you see so that's the advantage that I believe my ministry has over any that I've ever seen before is that once we get we have to might have to tear out that old foundation but once we get it built and we get those walls up you're not gonna have to tear it down again you're only gonna keep building and keep building and keep building it's gonna keep getting builder and build bigger and bigger and bigger okay so we're coming near the end we're kind of winding down if anybody has any last um that's right learn how to, how to identify once you know like Moses first time you ever read Matthew 17 about the Mount of Transfiguration you're looking at Moses Christ and Elijah you had no idea there were three witnesses of spare blood and water now you know Moses is a water witness Christ is the blood witness and then Elijah is the spirit witness and once you know that then you realize that Elijah in his testimony is testifying about all of the spirit witnesses and Christ is testifying about all the blood witnesses and the more that you understand that and you see those three witnesses the more you know about the Bible characters and then you can see the larger picture that's that's where the growth is going to come from so my job between now and the whenever we're taken oh somebody asked something about uh, oh maybe I'm no oh are you predicting a timeline when we be taken oh that was lady that asked that and uh, lady doesn't really understand um, where we're at and where we're trying to go um, are you predicting a timeline the because uh, I don't see another question and um, so the thing is coming to my mind is that um, one of the reasons that we're here is because of the way the earth is behaving the earth and uh, the earth is testifying that something bad is coming for the whole earth whenever you have only one six magnitude earthquake in more than six months I don't know if that's ever happened I don't think that's ever happened since we since any time that any of us has been born our entire lives I don't believe that's happened I can go back and investigate but I don't think it's happened we average 18 per year we average one of those babies more than one of those babies every month on average without the black star being here then 2014 we reached a peak the peak in activity seismic act earth change activity now it's going down again because the the crust the environment you know put on the science hat for a minute the between the crust and the magma is the environment is changing because of the magma plume formation that's underneath and now everything the tectonic plates are being separated that is dangerous that's really really dangerous having those earthquakes and the pattern is um, Puerto Rico is the watch area right now it's a uh, quarter two B is where the activity is happening for some reason the, the the deep earthquake events we haven't had that many as we have in in the past but some for some reason the 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 elbow position where under South America where the rebound takes place it's been sending most of the energy up quarter 2a up where Ridgecrest happened you know and and Cascadia that hasn't been happening lately so I've been missing I know the patterns been doing this a long time I'm pretty smart at it and I'm watching the patterns and it's not things are changing and remember on last year we were we, using the the math we were able to predict or I was able to predict the day that three of those big quakes happened in the seven quake series the day I mean picking one out of seven that's pretty amazing but picking three out of the seven the day that they were going to strike that's pretty amazing using the data from the previous orbit cycles well guess what only we only got the backside quake the first one it happened exactly according to numerical modeling that hasn't happened since back in was it 2013 or something because Jupiter's been playing a role in messing with us now Jupiter's moved away so the numerical modeling worked perfect on May the 14th 
and then we reached outside oral position on August the 14th, and then we had our backside alignment quake on on uh, November the 14th, and now on February the 14th, we're going to get exactly at the 90 degree position. And so now the number 17 is going to dominate this cycle. May the 17th, October the 17th, and then November the 17th. So we'll see how it shakes out. But the black star could be here on this cycle. I'm just saying. It could be here on this cycle. It could be that my crossing date is May the 17th. And that I've hit all this with the numerical modeling, you know, without realizing it. But um, we're not hitting any backside alignment quakes now because they're not happening. And I, I talked to these guys, the, the emergency management people, and I sent them the, the email, and they sent me a, a reply. They really did. They gave me a phone number. They said, you can call us. They said, they are aware of everything in my email. They're aware, which I don't know if I believe that, because what I shared with them is about what's coming from space and the magma plume form. You know, I really don't think that they really understood everything I wrote in there. But according to them, the Tyler guy, Ron Tyler, they are aware of all this. And if they're aware of all this, then, they, then I'm bugging them. I don't need to. I'm trying to help you with information that you don't know. If you guys know everything that I'm, you know, then I'm bugging you. I don't want to bug anybody. So I kind of left it at that. And I'm, you know, obviously doing my Black Star reports. I have to work on that tomorrow and the next day. Like I worked on this report for these two days. So, um. Oh, right now in Puerto Rico. Oh, have I seen it before? Um, the you, if you've been following my update reports, then be, three weeks before this happened, then Puerto Rico came up on our radar because the sack of flags. I mean, it was pretty easy to see what was happening. That if that place has two to three events per day of the stack of the flags, so you'll see 21 flags. That's normal. But when you see 123 flags, that's not normal. So it was pretty easy to see that that was, if you remember my update report, I even turned the earthquake 3D around and showed how tall that stack of flags was. I go, watch area. This is where we're going to watch. And then sure enough, that's where, uh, what, what I call what's happening there in that region, you've seen a lot of the mud volcanism. That's because the horns that are growing underneath from the magma plume formation, they push up, they're pushing up out of the transition zone, they're pushing on all that magma, and the pressure is looking for somewhere to go. And so the pressure builds underneath between the crust and between, you know, the, the, the magma that's supporting the crust. The pressure grows there, and the pressure has, is looking for a place to go. And so it's pushing the mud right up through the cracks, the, tech, the, the cracks between the tectonic plates. Um, that's a good exercise to learn how to identify the three witnesses. Um, you've read my book, The Mystery Explained, right? Because there are two charts there that, uh, okay, well, those charts, they list the singularities in the left-hand column, then the spirit witnesses, the blood witnesses, and the water witnesses. So it gets, it's, the diagrams at the beginning are simple. And they get more complicated as you go through. So the charts, they're, uh, let me see if I have, I don't have that pulled up for you. And I also just realized that the uh, ebook version that I haven't even opened yet, that I'm sharing with you guys, if you're using the ebook version, the page numbers for the diagrams are not the same. That was brought to my attention last week, I believe, by Kathy. So I'm saying it's on page 309. That's from the printed book. The hard hardback book. That um, that's the page number. They made me go through and rename all my numbers to the page number that they're in as part of the publishing process. So now I have all those diagrams that I share with you guys. The videos they're all numbered. So whenever they come up, then I um, I know what page they're on, but it doesn't correspond. So uh, um. Well, Jazz, you know, that's kind of a funny statement. But here's the truth. God is still the only game in town. So you can get on the right side of God, or you can stay on the wrong side of God. 
What is it that you really want to do? How, how are you going to spend eternity? Because this life is just like a dream. It's like going underwater holding your breath, this life. The rest of the time out of water, that's in the next realm. And you and I, we know each other in the other realm. And the things that you're saying right here make you look kind of silly. So um, we take God's word here very seriously. And um, if you want to show up here, then uh, you're welcome. But you're pretty much going to want to lurk. You know, and learn. See that website up here at the top? You might want to go there and click and look at some of the free stuff, the free videos. Two Gospels in the New Testament, two churches, if you're really interested in knowing the truth of God's Word. Because there are a lot of counterfeits that are out there. You know, that mix the Gospel, the Kingdom, and the, 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 uh, the Word of the Cross together. The churches together, they just make stuff up as they go. That's not how we operate here. So if you want to know more, we're ha happy to help you with that. And with that, then um, appreciate you guys coming and asking really, really good questions. And I hope that you got something out of it and that God's blessing you. And if you, uh, throughout the week, then uh, write down whenever my videos come out, and it doesn't have to be today's video. It could be last Tuesday's video or the Tuesday before. Then to have yourself a little pencil you know, piece of paper and write down your question. If you write down, if you come here with a list of questions, then then uh, it'll help us to be have more of a smooth flow, and it's going to challenge me more, right? And then uh, I think that we're going to get more out of it. And if ever, I mean, if one of you guys want to come up to the mic, ask your questions or whatever, because I am I got a one hour and thirty one minutes and twenty six seconds right now of uh, recording. Then of anyway. So I'll see you guys next Tuesday, and I hope that you uh, you have a great week. And um, I'll see you on the next Black Star uh, report that's coming out on Thursday.